back to Empower In. I'm Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So I have a video request from Ashley Smith who said, can you make a video on how to deal with nursing teachers? Sometimes I feel like my teachers favor other students and I do try to not take anything personally, but can you make a video on how to hold yourself together in nursing school and deal with teachers who may be a little rude? So actually this is a good question because we definitely are not treated fairly by all of our professors. And just in general, just as life is, there's going to be some people that just absolutely love us and some people that we just can't seem to do anything right with. And we all will experience that and be a different person for everybody. But um, one thing, I, I definitely have um, one specific professor that came in mind, especially in nursing school. And here's what I did um, in order to deal with that situation. So what I did was I worked five times harder than I ever worked in my entire life. And that was for one reason and one reason only. Because when I was done with her class, I never wanted to see her ever again in my entire life. Now I know sometimes you may have to um, work with some of your professors, but the majority of your nursing professors you will never have to see again in your entire life. So my... My first advice to you is just to push yourself as hard as possible so that you will never have to see her again <laughs> or him again. So the second thing that you want to do is you want to value their time. Um, a lot of times professors get kind of irritated with students because they feel like they're wasting their time. So just become more aware of the questions that you ask and the way you are interacting with this professor. So I actually learned to become very organized with that specific professor that I had a problem with. And what I realized was that I was going to this professor and I wasn't organized. And I was just kind of asking general questions and she was getting annoyed with me. And then after I got kind of over myself and I was like, okay, well, maybe I could approach this differently. Then I thought about it and I was like, well, what if I went to her and I had a very organized fashion. So I did, and I did this in anatomy and physiology, but I had just forgotten to do it. And what I did was I took all of the material that she gave us. She gave us um, notes and slides, and then we also had our text. So I took three questions, specific questions from the notes. I took three specific questions from the slides, and I took three specific questions from the text. All of those questions I did a little bit of research on, but I didn't know everything about them. I went to her and I was very organized, I sat down and I would just ask these questions and then after she answered the question, I would ask where she found that material. So what this did was it helped her realize that I was using this time very specifically. I wasn't you know, going there to whine or complain or to tell her that the last test wasn't fair. I was going there genuinely to get information and to do better on the next test. So the other thing that I was doing, which maybe she didn't know, but what I was doing was I was trying to figure out this specific professor's testing strategy. Now in nursing school, I don't know how they get away with this, but they do not have to test you on any of the material they give you. Um, I guess it's because that's how it is in nursing in real life. But basically what happens is you have your text, you have your notes, you have your slides, and you could study your butt off on all of those and fail the exam. That's literally how it is. Because you have to know real life situations, but how would you possibly know that unless you've spent a lot of time in the hospital or have a family member with that disease? So it's a very difficult you know, way to test. However, professors are professors and they can create the exams. So sometimes they create exams that are from the text and are from the notes and are from the lectures. And so when your professor is answering those questions, ask them where they're getting the material from. And if they can't give you specific pages or specific slides, that gives you a key that you need to go above and beyond the book. And what that means, going above and beyond the book, is finding as many NCLEX questions as you possibly can. And that's what above and beyond the book means. <laughs> okay, so the third thing that um, you kind of have to understand is that being favored or being the favored student and getting you know things a little bit easier or maybe have, or whatever, being favored is not always a favorable thing. I can tell you for sure that 
that professor's class was one of the hardest classes we had. There was a rumor, I can't prove anything, that she did give a curve to several students that were failing. All I can say is this, I passed her class with an A, I passed the NCLEX examination on, in 75 questions. I know a lot of students in my class that did not pass the NCLEX examination in 75 questions. So what I can say from personal experiences, that made me a much better student. That made me tougher, that made me study harder, and that made me better. So not being favored is not a bad thing. It just means that it might be what you need. It might not feel good, and sometimes it hurts when somebody doesn't like us. I mean, I know it hurts me when you know professors get annoyed with me or don't like me or when people in general don't like me of course nobody likes that but you know it just it just makes us the people that we are today and it helps me realize how I want to treat people in the future so anyways um, I mean just this is a little off note but I will say this the main reason I started this was because the first day of clinicals in my in nursing school was the most unpleasant experience of my life I was an OB and you know the nurse came up to me or actually no I was I was pushed by my nursing instructor to, to go up to the nurse who did not want me to be there and she the first question before anything she's like you know do you smoke and I'm like no I don't smoke <laughs> do you drink coffee I was like a little bit but you know not really she's like well you might as well start and then that was it I didn't see her for the rest of the clinical she wanted nothing to do with me and I didn't know what to do with myself it was the most uncomfortable experience that I had ever had I hated the hospital and I didn't even want to become a nurse but obviously since then I've had much better experiences and you know I went to make the hospital a more you know loving place as much as it can be and that's what started all of this. So good things can come from people that treat us bad if we choose to look at it that way. So Ashley, thank you so much for your question. And I really enjoyed making this video for you. And anyways, any more video requests or if you just want to say hi to me, post a comment. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Love you. Bye.